Hey, I'm actually recording. All right. Want to see how long my hair is? Look how long. Woo! That's long, bitches. Um, hello. Uh, this is a uh, recording for my uh, precious girls. Penelope, mm, uh, I'm so, so sorry that um, I didn't come save you from those nasty people who I want to kill for what they've done to you. And I'm saying this all nicely at the moment. I'm not, it's not a true reflection of how, of my true emotions, but what I'm doing at the moment is I'm in a mode where Mum's emotions are just flat. But Penelope, um, gosh, there's so much I've got to say to you. Uh, thank you for, oh, was that you? I think it was you, Chardon. Um, Look, I'm sorry about my memory loss. I'm sorry it took me so long to figure out that I actually had triplets in hospital. And I remember seeing the photo of the three umbilical cords. And if you're watching this, that when you go onto Mum's Facebook page and you'll see that long um, umbilical cord that Jill Harnett is showing in the photo, okay, that's the lie. And that's the lie that makes Mum very, very angry because when Penelope first came out, out with it came three umbilical cords. Now, what this means is that each and every one of you has a ripped out belly button. So that means all my triplets have outies, not innies, okay? So that's that's how you can tell who my triplets are. Um, I have other children too. Another baby was stolen from my womb in around 2000, 2001, um, when she was um, pulled out of me by Penny Iosefa Solomona. And his cop friend, who I think is Alicia's brother, he's an unsworn sworn cop, and if I'm not mistaken, he's the one married to Elise. Ah, oh, what a bitch and a cunt of a life we've all had. Now, I'm sorry for my swearing, but mum swears now because now that I don't suffer memory loss anymore, mum's at a place in her life where she just feels like swearing sometimes, and... I know you girls do too. Uh, so many of you I'm concerned about. Um, I know your faces. I know what you look like today. Um, I love you all. There's Penelope, Shard and Katrina. You're my three triplets. Then there's uh, Shalia. Shalia. If you go by the name Shalia and you've got those cuts on your stomach then your other name is Shard and Shalise Shard and so you've got Shalise Penelope, Shalise Chardon, Shalise Katharina. Katharina, I think Penny stole you and swapped you with another mum. And uh, I'm going to figure out if that's what's also happened. Long story short, my baby girls, who I love very much, they're just leaving Arden aside for now after what Arden has done, raping some of you over his life, over his young life. But, um, what, what is really important, uh, what I really want you to know right now today, is that today is the 9th of November, 2013. Um, in two days' time, um, the to unit, which is where I am right now recording this. This is my room that I'm staying in. This is what we call Hotel Tarotu. Look at this. You've got a lovely uh, dressing table there, but a mess on top. You've got, and I know you'll remember this, Shalise. Shalise, who was also here, patient property. Look, they've got me locked in this room. Ah, I'm in an asylum. Over here is another dressing table and there's mum's pile of washing on the left and that's a stack of DVDs from a nice lady who I meet here and her name is Inga. I'm going to set you up on this dressing table now so you can see hands 
free look. Oh, and yes, mum's showing me armpits. Um, so today uh, is the 9th of November uh, 2013. Yesterday, the Albany District Court um, sanctioned, which means they passed a legal piece of paper that says that Professor Wright, who runs this place here at um, Tahoe Unit, here at North Shore Hospital, is now allowed to drug me with very, very legal drugs. Now, I'm recording this for you today because I really, really want you to be all aware of the fact that Mum has a perfectly functional mind. I'm perfectly fine. And um, and they want to drug me anyway. Why? Because Mum has some spiritual beliefs that um, um, that you know fall Junkies fall into right. the category of cultural. Uh, what's the word? Um, cultural heritage, if you like. And um, sorry, people were distracting me right then. And. Um, Mum also has some beliefs about the New Zealand government, which um, that they are really, really bad people. There are some really, really bad people in the government who are doing some really, really bad things to children. And a lot of my children can confirm this as fact. Chardon, you with your cuts in your stomach from where they pull the baby out of you when you're only about two or three years old. I think two and a half. You were so little when they stole you from the community uh, daycare uh, play centre group um, in Oriwa. Um, and I know the lady who stole you. I've seen her a couple of times. I've seen her with different children. Um, babe girl, thank you for coming to Oriwa uh, and claiming me as your mum. I'm recording this and I'm telling you a lot of these things because um, I'm worried about how the drugs are going to affect my mind on um, uh, when they drug me on Monday. Now remember today's the 9th of November uh, 2013 and they're going to drug me on the 11th and they're going to use some very lethal drugs to drug me and I'm very very unhappy about this. This is me just walking around um, the institutionalese baby girl. I know you were here. I know that, see look, mum's in room number 10. Look, it's got my name on it. See? Um, I know you were here, baby, and I know that a lot of the staff here, they're all, actually all of them, they're all lying about the fact that you were here, and um, I'm going to expose them to the International Court of Justice because it seems that mum can't get justice in this country because they're all so biased. They can't afford for truth like this to get out. So. They're going to drug me and they're going to make mum's mind look very crazy. They're going to try and make me, they're going to try and turn me into a vegetable. Oops, I've got to be careful not to record other people here. <laughs> um, so here we go. Remember this little phone room, Shillies? I wonder if that's where you called mum from. Look, there's a lot of. A lot of you girls that I want to give messages to. Um, time's running out, Shalise. Do you remember that picture on the wall? Time is running out, and um, I've left a lot of messages for you on Mum's website. Um, Mum's website is www.globalmaori.info. You got that? I'll say it again www.globalmaori.info. And um, this here is the ping pong room. Oh, oh, what is. Doorway. Look, remember this room, Shalise? It's the ping pong room. And here we come down the hallway. I'm walking backwards now. Mum's walking backwards. And here we are in the lounge. Look, we've got a pool table. And we've got the lovely David over here. David, who's a good friend of mine, who's helping keep mum sane in a place like this. So it doesn't really look like that bad a place, does it? Got your TV. Look at all these couches around. Oops, I can't get the right camera angle. Look at all the couches. And that lovely big TV. 
And from this angle, we've got the pool table over there. Two pianos. Oh, right. Two pianos. Um, so it seems like quite a harmless environment, doesn't it? But this is me in, in what we have come to recognise as the mental health asylum. And look here, we've, we've even got vending machines. I mean, how, <laughs> how modern day is that? I bet you they didn't have vending machines in the old days when they used to torture patients at Carrington, um, Keen Seat. What is that other place? Alice, Lake Alice or Alice Lake, something like that. Please remember this picture on the wall? Look at that. So, I'm just giving you a glimpse into uh, how Mum's feeling. This here is the computer that I that I use to that I'll be typing on every day to let you all know how Mum's going uh, with this new drugging, uh, with this new lot of um, drugs that you're going to give me. They're giving me clozapine. Clozapine is one of the most dangerous drugs out of all the mental health drugs. And they're going to give it to me. This here is the dining room. Woohoo! Now, how many of my children have been here and eaten at these tables? Well, I've got to tell you too, this is my second admission. And I remember I'm making this video for all of you, my children. This here is the kitchen. I'm making this video for all of you because, number one, I want you all to love me very, very much and to never, never ever let go of that love for mum because I love you all too. And yes, there are some things that I've got to sit down and talk about and have some very, very long talks. Um, Shalise, I want to show you this, the washing machine room because I'm wondering if something bad happened to you in here. I just get a feeling about it. That's mum being a psycho. Oh, and I get a strong feeling about this toilet in here. See, this is just off the kitchen chalice. So, uh, if you remember, if you remember these places, um, let me know, okay? And uh, let me know and we'll... Um, and, and we'll sit down and have a chat. Hello, Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie. Let me know and we'll have a chat. Um, oh, and I better show you the courtyard too. So outside here is the courtyard. Hey! Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. See? Is this so bad? Does this look like a place where they torture people? Well, believe it or not, they do. I'm just recording a video in case they drug my mind to become a vegetable. And then oh, yeah. At least I've got proof that I was, hey, you know, look how I how was. About, how about with the garden? We'll, uh, oh, you guys doing gardening? I was going to, yeah. Oh, okay. Can you give some advice? <laughs> <laughs> You're asking a person who hates gardening. Oh, yeah. Love vegetables, love flowers, hate so, gardening. <laughs> Yeah, I, I reckon it's a good Actually, that's true. Yeah. It is true. I wonder why they chop these off without pulling the stalks out. Oops. Um, so, anyway, this here is the courtyard. And I'm also recording this video because I want the public to have a bird's eye view of what it is like to actually be at a place like this. Now I'm being very, very careful not to record anyone else in this video. Um, but here we go. Those, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, uh, we've got even got a volleyball net here and it's lovely. It's, it's a nice big backyard. Come out here for some fresh air. And uh, it's also a good place to vomit up pills if they're not agreeing with you. <laughs> but don't tell them I said that. I've got to um, help out the uh, Albany Rangers. Oh, yeah? With um, native New Zealand clients. Oh, wow. Cool. Cool. 
Yeah. Some time. How'd you get them off um, like that? Who, who the car was? Yeah. I'm going to help out, like, just with them. Okay. Yeah. So whereabouts are you going to do this job? In Albany Rangers. Oh. Which is just above East Coast Grace. Oh, wow. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I have to go there and help them. Uh, you, is it a paid, paid job? Paid. Oh, right. For free, so I gotta just go help I made up things already been done myself. Oh, true. Sure. Dealt with um, New Zealand animals. Like okay, humans, yeah, um, yeah. He's up dealt with uh, uh, what's the lizard called? The lizard. Um, the gecko. Uh, the gecko. no, the tuatara. Tuatara. Yeah, yeah, nice. I like your pronunciation too. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, I was gonna go help them out. Okay. That's going to be amazing. It's going to be really therapeutic, you know, very relaxing job, yeah. learn about nature and stuff. Yeah, as soon as I get out of here, I get a new car and I have to help them out. All right. He can have you saved up for a car? On the ground. Yeah. He can do multiple backflips. Seriously. Like, can like, I shoot a hit? Like, like that. Like, yeah. And then multiply do backflips. No way. Yeah. I can do it if I'm on soft mattresses. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, whoo. Oh, it's scary. It's scary. Okay. Oh, sorry. Here I am again. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to, this is, this is the basketball hoop. Can I hold that up? Here? Right here. Yes, please. Victor, Victor's going to hold this for me while I, you've got to point the, okay. All right. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. This is oh. Nelly doing a shot. This is Nelly taking a basketball shot. Three, two, one. Oh, no. Oh. Let me try that again. Try that again. <laughs> okay, are we pointing at the camera? Yes, yeah, we are. Here we are. At the basketball thing. Okay, here it comes. Okay, you guys again. One, two, three. Oh, almost. Again. Three times okay. lucky. Third time lucky. Oh my gosh. That's it. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Back to the alley. Nice snip four shot. <laughs> <laughs> Victor, that was Victor by the way, and he's a very nice person. Okay, thank you to Victor. <sighs> okay, so we keep uh, going around. Um, Mum's very heartbroken about <sighs> all my children who've had to battle the SIF system, <sighs> who've had to battle the mental health system. My precious girl that got locked in a padded room. I see you. I see you there. You bit some material out of the padding. Oh, I'm dying of heartbreak wondering if you're still alive. I'm gonna put you down on the ground now. Oh, oh, just got a bit of really, really strong pain right there. Um, last night I was in my bed just crying and crying for the fact that I finally get over my memory loss and now they want to drag me. And here I am trying to recall all these important memories. Now the reason why I believe they want to drag me is because I know things that, um, that I shouldn't know but I know them because mum has very strong psychic ability sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. Um, I've seen so many things. I've seen uh, one of my chalises, and I, uh, you're the one holding a little, um, I think it's a Kodak or a Fuji box. Um, there's a photo of you um, on Mum's website. You're at um, 75 E Riverside Road in this photo and um, baby whew, they have um, I've seen them oh no actually no that's 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 you oh I see gosh that's you gosh it is you You've got the box and everything. Oh, baby girl. I've seen a guy that looks like Professor Wright um, yelling at you. He's really, really angry with you. Now, I've seen one of you with one of these things in your mouth. 
that pushes the lip right out like this so it shows the teeth opens the mouth wide and I've seen one of you with a black ball stuffed into your mouth now that's that's the kind of torture that mum sees because I'm psychic oh where are we oh where are we too much light um, it's the kind of torture that mum sees because I'm psychic and uh, these guys here at this mental health asylum they can't handle that they can't handle the fact that a stupid darky like me has access to informations and happenings that I wasn't even there to see but I know it I know it's happened so baby girl you were taken from the court uh, from the city uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking you were found by police officers when you were hiding in a car park or when you were trying to run back home to mum because I haven't seen you since that day oh sweet girl oh sweet girl you must have run away from court eh? oh Jesus I've seen so many bad things, things that would really, really shock people in this country and, and make them think, oh my God, how can she, how can she believe that, that all these kind of cruelties happen? I've seen one of my daughters with her head sawn off. Now who's going to believe that? No one but mum. Mum believes that because I've also seen other things and I believe that was done by Bob Powell. Bob Powell is now dead. He died of respiratory problems inside a retirement home. Um, Mum had the had the balls to ask his family if they murdered him because I don't know. He was talking like he wanted to come clean before he died. Anyway, I know I'm jumping from subject to subject. It's just this is what it's like to be a psychic and to see things that just come from out of nowhere and so it, it teaches you to sort of you, you've got to in order to catch the information that um, you get as a psychic you've got to just whew, be ready you know to just grab it when it comes and so often that means taking your attention off what you're doing to focus for a moment on um, your psychic perception you've just received like Oh. and it's really tough because mental health people just don't understand that they they don't like it because they know they're a lying pack of of shithead liars and they know that they're torturing some children like usually so I've seen a guy coming into your room at night I've seen him licking your hair like his tongue and everything behind your hair um, I haven't seen him raping you yet but um, I've seen him threatening you saying that if you tell um, then we're going to uh, then he's going to kill you I've also this is to my daughter who's um, just gone over to Australia with Tahir and Carol um, sorry Shalise and that breaks mum's heart to know what they were doing to and I realize now that that's why you had those cuts on your wrists because you can handle that and I wouldn't expect you to either and to you it seemed like your only way out because you couldn't tell anyone could you you were just so frightened and in fact if you did tell anyone they would call you the liar while this guy walks free now how fucking fair is that baby girl hey how fair is that do you think sucks doesn't it this world this world really fucking sucks the cruelties here are monstrous uh, take for example Professor Wright who's the head honcho here at this um, fucking Taharuta unit mental health bullshit place okay he's um, registered my daughter Shalise Morton here as a patient Maggie knows all of these staff members the older ones here that were here in May last year 2012 um, 12th of May 2012 it was when I was admitted last year this is now my second admission but during my first admission baby girl that was the one of the happiest days of my life was seeing you and 
Oh, picking you up off the ground. Oh, I just wish I could hold you in my arms again. Oh, that was like giving me a pill of happiness amid mum's miseries and amid your misery. So I know, I know Shirley's through being here, through being open to some of my psychic perceptions about this place. I know that fuckhead was doing that to you and I believe it's the same fuckhead that's now left this place and gone to Australia. You correct me if mum's wrong, but he was a white guy, kind of stocky with a bald head, unless he just shaved his head when I started going there. Um, but I saw him, baby. Um, I'd like to know why Professor Wright is lying about um, having you here, why, in fact, they're all lying. Um, yeah, I'd really like to find out the truth about that. But hey, this is the truth here. This is why they want to drug me, because they don't like the fact that I see things as a psychic. I prefer to call it, call myself a telepathist, which is where I connect with another person's thoughts uh, and their feelings, and I can see things through their eyes. I know it sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's, it's, a, it's a genuine fact. That I can see things through other people's eyes. I can even connect with their memories, and um, and I can see things that that people just don't want me to see. Which is why they used to burn witches at the stake when they were older. Um, they used to burn them alive and teach them a lesson for telling the truth about things that they shouldn't know about. So. Um, and the other biggie is that uh, I'm accusing New Zealand government of literally torturing and murdering people through their uh, principal ministries uh, known as New Zealand government, uh, sorry, um, New Zealand Ministry, uh, Ministry of Justice, New Zealand Police, New Zealand Child, Youth and Family, New Zealand Mental Health, they're all doing it. Um, a lot of it is, I feel, motivated by race hate. Um, the hating of niggas, that's me bitches. Um, they they don't seem to like um, niggas very much. Um, I think the main reason is because they recognise uh, us Māori niggas as the true owners of this land and they can't handle the fact that um, while we're alive, we'll keep trying to do something about it. I've got to tell you now about this other guy I meet in here. I can't tell you his name because um, mum's respecting their right to privacy. Um, but he said that this guy named Gandhi, who I haven't googled yet, I don't know much about him at all, but he said that this guy named Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. What do you think about that? Be the change you want to see in the world. Well, I don't know if any of you, my beloved children, have... Uh, remember mum singing that song, but I'm going to try and sing it for you now. I'm coming out, I'm dancing. I want the world to know, gotta let it show. I'm coming. Okay, that's <clears throat> mum singing ain't the greatest at the moment, but oh, and here's a little garden. <gasps> look at this parsley. Oh, look at, is that parsley? Yes, look at the parsley. Oh, who cares? It's only a garden. But, uh, that's, that's, that's their stupid little glass house over there. I'm calling it stupid because uh, the lady who told me about it is also lying about you, Shalise. Um, so many of them are lying about you. And I'm going to do something about it. I'm not content to let them get away with holding prisoner. Two of my daughters here, and now me, and now are trying to drug me because they want to shut me up. Well, here's the thing, my darling gorgeous girls, and to all you other people listening to this and, and watching this from um, globalmaori.info or on YouTube, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm so tired of the bullshit. You know, I've, I've got a lot of lies being told about me in court that are just pure and utter filthy bullshit. Um, oh, who, which one of you uh, recognises this little this little trellis place right here. Anyway, so I'm so I'm going to I uh, I'm taking a stand because I believe that it's about high time that people like me are actually rewarded for um, 
what our psychic abilities or uh, telepathy can do. We call it spirit side, don't we girls? Um, we should be rewarded. It has saved lives. Um, there needs to be a responsible approach to this because a lot of our young children are being born with the skiff Māori people and in case you didn't realise it, pay closer attention to your child because a lot of our children, European children, are also being born with this gift. Uh, times are changing and we've got to move with the times. And we need a government that's going to be protective and nurturing of uh, these children. We, we need a government that's going to be honest and kind and just and to keep its people safe. Is this, is this, keeping, is this New Zealand's idea of keeping people safe? They're, they're saying that I'm a risk to myself and to others. I have absolutely no desire, no desire whatsoever to commit suicide. Oh, I do feel like hurting other people who have hurt my children. But here's the one defining fact about me. I resist the urge. Why do I resist the urge? Because I want to see them held accountable in a court of law. I want to see them in the, in the witness stand shaking in their boots when they are forced to acknowledge what they have done to little children in this country. I want the world to see how big this problem really is. It is as big as I'm saying. It's not just a small thing. There are a lot of teenagers who are really, um, I'm being told to be quiet. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, she's blown me a kiss too. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll be quiet. There's a lot of teenagers um, in this country who are raping little girls. These guys, the roast busters, I mean, you're not even picking at the tip of the iceberg. There's so many people doing that in this country. Adults, teenagers, doctors, priests, police officers, judges, social workers, mental health workers. They're doing it in secret. There seems to be, it seems to be a movement started by the older generations that is really, really well entrenched in the older generations. But it's now affecting our young ones, our youth. There are child pregnancies now to all my beloved children, my daughters who have had your babies underneath the house, who have had your babies um, in other people's houses, inside a roof, roof space, you know, having to hide your babies because the people you're living with have raped you and impregnated you and they want to kill your baby. What a life, eh? What a joke. What a joke that a government like New Zealand government won't even acknowledge that these things are happening. Which is why mum's promoting a new government in this country. The Māori government of Aotearoa. Um, it's just a really, really fucking bad situation when you've got people in power who are capable of raping little children, torturing them like my brother Ernest, uh, Ernest Patrick Morton or Patrick Ernest Morton, him too, uh, he's raped me, he first raped me that I, no he raped me younger than that, but when he raped me when I was six years old, uh, he impregnated me and I had a baby and I'm wondering if that baby of mine is still alive. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to find out and see if, if she is still alive. Oh, here we go. Yes. Um, Hi. Maybe I'm sitting oh, he's on my room. I'm thinking and reading. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, concentrate. concentrate. Okay. <laughs> you are very loud, voice. Oh, I'm very sorry. Can you about please that. calm down? Uh, I'll go and. Uh, I'm actually recording a video. Please go very yes. far, maybe. Yes. Back. Yes. Maybe. Okay. 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 Then it's said that boy has been. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Now I just got told off. Um, and that's nothing compared to some of the things that can happen around here. Um, but she said it nicely. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let that slide. I've got a more important... Um, more important um, matter on my hands here. Um, what are we doing here? Okay, so, well, here we are, my darling, precious children, and I just hope that one day, one of these days, we'll be, all be reunited, we'll be a happy 
family. Um, New Zealand government is as bad as I'm saying it is. They're all hiding it. The reason why they want to drug me to shut me up is because they can't afford for the truth that I know, even about them incinerating children at North Shore Hospital, children who were uh, murdered here, uh, at the, uh, at, tortured to death and murdered here at the Takarota Mental Health Unit, which I've just walked you around. Um, Shalise, now I know your spelling name is different to Shalise, but I'm going to call you Shalise Lisa just so we can separate, so we have some difference. Shalise Lisa, they might have just called you Lisa. Um, and I'm thinking they probably did. Um, but Shalise Lisa, my baby girl, um, back to you again. You're the one holding the little box, the little camera uh, box and a photo on my mum's Facebook page. Uh, you're the one who Ripika's baby, uh, were you swapped with her? Maybe you ran away when Arden was raping you, eh? And yes, mum's really, really fucked off angry with Arden raping you girls. <sighs> and I'm very, very ashamed of myself. As, as hard as I tried, and it's no laughing matter. Because, and I know what it's like to be raped, really violently. I was telling you about Ernest, yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's got to be, he's got to be imprisoned. Uh, I believe he deserves death because I believe he's murdered two girls uh, and a baby. Shalise, your baby that you had under the house. And this is all going to sound like crazy talk to the rest of the world because they just they just don't. A lot of people just don't realise that <laughs> this reality exists for a lot of these children. So, yeah. So mum's on my own, trying to create exposure of this very very cruel world that babies and children live, where they are raised by paedophiles, and they have to fight paedophiles for their very lives. And my brother Ernest is one of them. David Peter McGregor. You're a fucking wank and you deserve fucking death. But does that mean I'm going to kill you? No. That means I'm going to fucking haul your ass off to the International Court of Justice if I have to. Or into the High Court. But one thing's for sure, buddy. You're a fucking son of a bitch and you have raped and murdered too many people. Dave, by the way, people, has murdered around four police officers. Consider this your news report. Um, and the some of the corrupt police officers who were part of this this anti-justice movement, um, they tried to blame it on my daughter. So Dave, who actually murdered these guys, these police officers, um, actually tried to, actually I'm not sure how many there were at the Nautilus that he murdered, but um, by the way, um, if anyone's watching this um, from the police, um, that guy Terry, um, he was a police officer, sort of reddish here. Um, he was the last person to be investigating the murders of these police officers um, at the Nautilus in Ottawa. It was David Peter McGregor. David Peter McGregor tried to blame my, blame my son. And now David's two children, uh, Robert McGregor and Sarah McGregor, they helped Dave, believe it or not. And I know they go to Whangpurao College and they're very nice kids. But I'm warning other parents out there that they are rapists and they, are, they also help their dad with murder, murdering people. And if you don't believe me, well, maybe you might find out the hard way, but it's these truths and more. Uh, Ruby and Leecho, I know you guys murdered that um, European couple um, for that car um, that you swapped with that guy on Trade Me, and you've now left um, your car at home with me. The fact of the matter is I hardly even drive the thing. I, it's blood money. I don't want it. Um, you guys have murdered a very sweet uh, European couple uh, just to get their car, and don't worry if you don't understand this uh, public who are, who are listening to this right now, but the people who uh, whose names I've just said, they understand it, and they know exactly where I'm coming from. So, there'll be no befriending of people in that regard. Um, well, all well, sounds very crazy, doesn't it? But it's the truth. Auckland District Court, we're burning people um, underneath the Auckland District Court. 
uh, somewhere down by the Wilson car park that's sort of down below it and just beside it by that big bouncy chair thingy. Um, they replaced what was there with um, J with uh, prison. They've turned it into like a prison just to hide the fact that they actually had an incinerator there and they were actually burning people. And if anyone's watching this, do if you remember the smoke <coughs> that came up through the Auckland District Court, it was really big, thick, uh, big thick black smoke. Some of the shops around this area will remember this thick black smoke because you had to clean your windows all the time, every day. And um, the thick black smoke used to come out of the Auckland District Court around four o'clock every day. I remember a truck that used to drive up that street that Margaritas is on that they've blocked off now just to make it look like no truck used to go there. They used to carry a vat with splattered blood on it and the vats looked large enough to contain about three or four bodies at a time. Um, my guess is that to disguise the smell of the burning bodies that they would have mixed um, it with uh, chemicals so that when they were burned you'd smell the, the chemicals burning more so than the smell of flesh burning. Okay, well, that's all my truth. I'm, I'm putting it out there to the world and um, I believe in what I'm saying so much that I'm taking it to the International Court of Justice and my challenge is to be able to put all this information that I've sort of given you in a bit of a jumbled um, context, okay, I've got to put it all in a very flowing and very um, comprehensive and and easy to understand format inside an affidavit which I will then file with the International Court of Justice and hopefully they'll open up a court case for me and I will be able to represent myself. Now if I haven't got the money to travel to The Hague it'll have to be by teleconference but if it is by teleconference then they won't take me as seriously as they'll take me if I'm there in person. So once they let me out of this place, if they let me out of this place, um, I will be um, raising funds uh, for a court case to the International Court of Justice, which will be about um, getting justice for the for New Zealand from New Zealand government. Uh, now, okay, let me rephrase that. It will be about taking New Zealand government to court for the racial genocide of um, Maori people. And today, and you're the fools if you don't believe me, but today it's human genocide. It's still probably, uh, it used to be predominantly Māori, but they've wiped a lot of us out now. There's actually only around, I've been told that there's only around 40,000 left. Now that's 40,000. If you calculate this whole bitch out, you'll find out that they're based on how many children Māori people are having here, for there to only be 40,000 today, it doesn't fucking add up. So you do the simple math and you figure out for yourself why there's only around 40,000 Māori who are claiming their Māori heritage. A lot of them are more so European with maybe a, the 64th of Māori. But you see a lot of all that was through raping our people, you know? And um, that's what you what is known as ethnic cleansing, where they cleanse the uh, ethnic um, identity out of the person by continuously forcing them, um, you know, or conditioning them to marry into other cultures and thinning out the blood. All right, this is going on YouTube. Um, if you guys want to think of me as crazy, I'm so bad. Um, but if you want to get behind me and support me, I'd really appreciate that because there's a lot of little girls in this country who have been raped by judges police officers, social workers, mental health workers and uh, they're all crying for justice. They're having little babies to these men and their little babies are being murdered in some cases. They're being raised as their sisters in other cases. And DNA tests will prove everything that I'm saying. So why won't New Zealand government do the necessary DNA tests? tests? Answer me that. Riddle me that. Yeah, it's a pretty fucked up world. It? I, I just want to really expose New Zealand government for the fact that they are doing some very bad things in this country. And I'm really, really angry about it. But we'll get there. I'm just walking around 
trying to um, trying to get a good light here. Hey, look, I'm going to put you guys in the tree. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, okay. Hey, to all my little girls out there, I want you to know something. Mum bleeds for you. All of you, Penelope, Chardon, Katerina. <sighs> There's one of you there. And I know you would have all made Mum feel this way if you'd all lived at home with me. But there's one among you who healed me from all the pain that I'd ever experienced in my life. It was like a spiritual healing. And it's called the power of love. And baby, you remember you climbed up on the chair at McDonald's and you said, you and me, you and me. And you said it in the voice of an angel and it's just one of my memories of you that I'm never going to let go no matter how much they drug me and everything I've told you guys I, w I just want you to have a really really good picture of what I am like today what mum's like today um, they've put me under the mental health act and they're trying to call mum crazy and mum's just not having a bar of it. It's a scam, it's a sham, and it's a hoax. They're labeling, labeling me.